Hi, in today's video, I'm going to do some bird photography in the hide in my garden. If you're a fairly new subscriber to the channel, you may not have seen any videos from this hide here in my garden. It's an old shed that I've converted and it's really useful if I've got a few spare moments to come and do some wildlife photography right here on my doorstep. There's quite a few videos already on the channel where I explain how I built the hide and how I set up the perches and feeders to get the best photographs of birds. There's another video as well where I built this reflection pool. So go and check that out if you're interested afterwards. I'll put links down below in the comments and up above in the card. I'm really lucky to have this right on my doorstep so I can do some wildlife photography whenever I want. Not everybody is quite that fortunate, but it is important to find something that you can really be passionate about and make sure that you enjoy your photography. I'm gonna see if I can find myself an interesting perch. Just over here, we've got an apple tree. So I'm gonna cut myself a branch off um, and use it as a perch for the birds to land on to make an interesting subject. It is actually quite difficult finding something that's appropriate. What I've done before is try and pick things with too many leaves or too many apples on. And you find that once you get them set up as a perch, if a bird lands on it, the bird gets lost because there's too much going on around it. So you need to try and keep it simple. And this branch that I found, I'll probably still have to cut some, some leaves off, but it's just got a single apple that will be facing towards the camera. So that was a, a consideration as well. Now, when you cut it, it is important to make sure you've got a good hold of the branch because as well what I've also done is I've let the branch fall as I've cut the branch which hasn't been very successful because then the apple's fallen off so I'm going to cut it now <coughs> so what I've what I'm trying to do is stick the the cutters into the crook of my arm so I can hold the branch with the other hand and so as I cut the branch is now free so it's quite large and all I'm really after is this bottom end here where there's an apple so all of this top will go but I'm going to do that a bit in a bit more of a neat way so let's go and put this up so the plan is to position the perch just here close to the feeders so as the birds come in to feed they'll land on the perch first before hopping over to the feeders I've got two metal posts here that I use for attaching the perch to. They'll just need hammering into the ground and it might take a little bit of um, finagling just to get it um, in the right position. Uh, I'll need to hammer them in, so I'm gonna carry on. To attach a perch to the post, what I've found is really useful is just Velcro because it's very quick and it's still really secure once it's stuck on. So I can, I have tried tying it before with string, but then when you come to change a perch, it's a lot of faff cutting string and messing about, but this is really, really quick. And it's really, you can see already with just one piece of Velcro on this post, it's already holding its weight. So I'll just stick another one on this end just to um, secure this part and then we'll start doing some trimming. This is the branch that I really want with the apple on. So these extra branches up here are just going to give the birds something to perch on where I don't want them. So they, these need to go. So we'll just take this off. Try and not knock the branch below. There we go. So that one's just leaves this more free. And the same with these here. They're just going to provide extra perches and birds just land on whatever's highest. So I don't really want them to land on that. So they're gonna, that's gonna go. And this one around the back is also gonna go. So we're just left with the one perch. So hopefully as they come in, they will land in this kind of area just before hopping over to the, per, uh, the feeders. Now it's time to do a little bit of trimming. 
Just here, this arrangement is still too busy. There's too many leaves. Some of them are a little bit brown. So I'm going to remove the unattractive leaves and just leave just enough to um, be attractive. Because what I want to do is I want the bird to land and th this is the ideal spot for the bird so I can get a whole composition here. So this leaf here that's sticking up is going to be a distraction. So I'll just have a little look at what's going to look good. Okay, the pruning may seem very extreme and possibly unnatural, which I, I can agree with because I've taken off a lot of leaves there. So, but what I've been left with is enough leaves that are attractive um, to suggest it's okay. Um, plenty of space for the birds to land, but nothing that will be jutting out the bottom of the frame. You've got to think of where the bird will be. The bird, if the bird's here, that, that leaf there is actually still quite a long way away from where the bird will be. So it will take up quite a lot of the, the picture. So I don't want things sticking out or sticking up that are just going to break the edge of the frame. So I want to try and keep it as clean as possible. So I'm in the hide now, everything's set up outside. All that's left now to do is to get the camera ready to start taking pictures. If you are a regular subscriber, you may have heard me say some of these things before, but there are quite a few new people who have joined us recently, so I do apologize if I repeat myself. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take out this insert that I've put into the shed. Um, on the front, there is a fake lens, so the, the birds get used to seeing things sticking out. Um, I've got a bean bag that um, sits on the shelf underneath the camera that just supports it to keep it nice and sturdy so the camera will go through the hole and then the bean bag will sit underneath and i've now got a really sturdy platform for taking pictures when i looked out the window this morning there was partial cloud cover and the forecast does say that the cloud is going to come and at the moment i've got quite bright sunlight now i did set the position of the feeders up specifically to catch the morning sunlight but just at the moment it's really harsh so i'm getting quite a harsh shadow so it's quite tricky so i might have to do a little bit of lifting of the shadows when i get into um photoshop which is not ideal really um, i could do with a slightly more overcast still bright but with a little slight cloud covering just to diffuse the light it's not totally ideal but hopefully the cloud cover might come a little bit later. That cloud cover that I wanted has arrived, so it's beautifully diffused light at the moment, so it's great, so I'll crack on with taking some more pictures. I'll just quickly talk about the settings that I've got on the camera. I've put it into aperture priority because I want to get a good exposure without having to fiddle with dials. That means I've had to rise the ISO up to 640 because the cloud covers come over. It's given me a shutter speed of 1 200th of a second and I've dialed in the aperture at 6.3. If you are enjoying this video, please go ahead and click like, subscribe and the bell notifications. That way you won't miss out on any of my future releases. Lots of people who watch my videos don't subscribe. If you're one of those people, go down there, click the button now.
So I'm now in the position that I always get to when I come and sit in the hide, is knowing when to finish. I've got a shot of a thrush this morning, that was a bit unusual, and I've got some great shots of the woodpecker that I'm really happy with, but I still haven't got that one shot that I've got in my mind of a bird sitting on the perch with the apple that I set up this morning. So I'm toying with the question of how long I sit here for. I could wait another minute and something could land there. I could sit here another hour and nothing might happen. It's always that case and it usually happens that I start packing the camera up and then out of the, the viewport I see something land on it and I have to start again. So I'm going to stay here for a little bit longer just yet and see if I can get that one shot that I'm after. This goes to show what patience does for you when you're sat in a hide. I managed to get the shot of the bird that I'd got in my mind on the, the perch with the apple, but I also got a nut hatch as well. The, um, just as I was thinking of packing the camera away, it came and landed on the tree in front of me. So extra bonus as well. So it's been a successful morning and I'll start packing away. So that's been a really successful morning today. I've spent roughly about two and a half hours sat in the hide, but I think it's paid off because I've got some great photos. I hope you've enjoyed seeing the photographs from this morning. Maybe I've even inspired you to go ahead and build your own hide in your garden. Now, if you've not got the ability to do this or the facilities or the room, whatever it is, you could still do something similar just from a window um, looking out into the garden. I started off using a tent as a hide. So there's lots and lots of possibilities. If you have enjoyed this video today, don't forget to click like, subscribe and the bell notifications. That way you'll be informed of all of my future releases and won't miss out on anything. Check out my next video. That's going live next Sunday at four o'clock. But for now, all that's left is to say, stay safe and I'll see you soon. But if you're not fortunate, oh God. Get this right. Stop. Don't subscribe. So be, if you back, check out Bishishka.